to Causing the Effect, a podcast focused on the exploration of your mind, body, and spirit. Causing the Effect community, I have Stacy, the Icon Berman. How is that, Stacy? That felt <laughs> that's that felt that's pretty good, honestly. It felt like a like a big that's a big that's a big thing. But everybody, I'm very excited um, to have Stacy here. Uh, fitness enthusiast, fitness guru, spirituality guru. I mean, name it. You've done it. Um, I got lots of t- a lot of questions to ask you. We're going to get into the spirituality piece, but I'm more right. curious about where this this journey started because I know you just kind of started in the fitness space. And for me, the journey was very similar. When I was in my 20s, I started realizing, wow, I could really change my material world. And I feel like that gave me like belief or another level of confidence that like led me into this space. And I was curious if that's a similar journey for you or were you always spiritual? Like, what did that look like? Well, that's a good question. I think, um, you know, it depends on how far back we want to go. I would start in utero. <laughs> that's mm-hmm. where all it started. No, but for real, I, I think that, you know, I've always been on a spiritual path in some way or another, uh, always very intrigued with, um, yeah, just consciousness. And, you know, I remember as a kid rem- thinking, if I wish hard enough, I can make something happen, which is kind of an immature version of some of the work like Joe Dispenza does, right? It's like mm-hmm. that kind of, please make it happen. Now, like science is actually coming out to show that actually, if we can access different parts of us, we can call different things to us manifesting, uh, manifesting different things. So anyway, I remember that always being of interest to me. At the same time, I, my dad was a black belt in Taekwondo, the third degree. So I remember going to the dojang with him and practicing, you know, and just kind of flopping around on the mat before I could probably even walk and being fascinated with the body and how it moves and, and its potential. And so I, I always kind of view this as I was on, at the time I viewed it as two different paths. Um, and now in retrospect, I could see that it was one path, but um, that interest in fitness and and martial arts led me professionally to uh, become a trainer and then a nutrition specialist. And then I started um, the first all year outdoor boot camp in New York City back in 1999, which kind of sparked this boutique fitness craze that we see throughout the world. One of them, not I'm not taking all credit. Um, And then on the other side, I came from a pretty abusive, neglectful household. So I have always kind of been on the spiritual path of trying to heal myself. And so these two paths were kind of going parallel. So I was doing the fitness stuff. I was doing the boot camp stuff. And I also started, like I traveled to India a number of times and I found my first teacher and he is a Siddha master of the Tamil traditions of Southern India. And, you know, it was great to work with him. We did lots of mantras and meditations and we're able to partner with different scientists to like see what was happening in the body and mind and brain and, and nervous system with these different sound technologies and with these different meditation practices. And so for me coming from New York, that was really good because while I am I would say 100% spiritual, I'm also 100% New York. So I wanted to understand what, like how, <laughs> how can a sound make me feel this way? And so this was like my first kind of step into that. And then from there, um, that I had a few, a group of friends there. And then we went to see my second teacher who is a Hopi medicine woman. And I wound up apprenticing with her for eight years, which was about 16 years ago. And um, so then was really kind of enmeshed in that experience of working with plant medicine and different energetic spirit, uh, energetic principles, if you will. And so, and then, you know, at the same time, teaching fitness and and doing, uh, you know, looking at health through the lens of the physical body and at the same time having a a, a personal experience of health through like spiritual emotional psychological view right and so eventually I got to a point where and I had um, what is considered to be like some spontaneous healings in some of the work that I did and So I wanted to understand what was going on. So that that's what led me to go back to school and start exploring, um, you know, what 
what's actually going out on with these traditional practices or alternative practices like plant medicine stuff or um, meditation, you know, these have been around for, you know, thousands of years um, and we know them to work, but science at the time was still like exploring how they work. And so that's kind of when I went back to school. So that allowed me to have the language to express what's going on in a scientific and approachable way, rather than just the like, well, when, you know, my yoni and my chakra systems are open, which I totally like, I'm totally down with, yeah. but I'm also from New York. So once you start talking yoni, I'm like, I'm out. <laughs> I'm out. So yes. you know what I mean? It, it kind of combined those two languages in a way that I find approachable and I, and I think other people find approachable as well. Yeah, I need some help on this. So <laughs> I, and I'm born and raised in Brooklyn. I am, you know, old school Italian family. My family right. is like, what is, what are you doing? Have you lost your freaking mind? And even for me now, th this whole balance of yeah. going from personal development with Joe and, you know, th this whole yeah. thing of, I, I love that stuff. But then there's this other yeah. side of it, this healing side. And then you get more deep into the yeah. spirituality. And I have people email me, a lot of East Coasters listen to this, a lot of young uh, men and women. And they, they have this issue with the balance of being in the material world, being a successful person. Um, you could use me finance in the day, whatever this is, and then having this deep spiritual connection. Um, how did you view that balance? Because it sounds like you, you were separating them a little bit. And, and that's what right. I seem to try to do is like there's the material world, there's the material goals, and then there's the spirituality side. How did that did that look like for you starting off? Was this an issue? And how does it look like today? Yeah, for me, I mean, initially it was very separate. Um, you know, I taught boot camp, I did the fitness thing. And although I think through that, myself and, and the people who came experienced something bigger than just like push ups in Central Park. Um, but it was, I never specifically talked about it. And then I had these, you know, spiritual practices and all that stuff. So initially they were very separate. And it wasn't until I actually went back to school that it allowed me to start speaking the language of crossing them over. Now it's just like, you know, and I don't, depending on the audience uh, that I'm speaking to and the clients that I'm speaking to, I may not say purpose. I mean, I may not say spiritual. I might say purpose. Do you feel like you have a purpose? Because most people can understand what that is. It's, it's a sense of wanting to do something that's just, it's greater than me. And it's greater than money too. Like money might be a goal, but that's not the intrinsic value. So depending on what the audience, who I'm speaking to, I might, instead of saying spiritual, I may say purpose. So I think that's a, a, a kind of same idea, but a different lens to look at it. And depending on, you know, where each person is at, we could kind of play around with that. Does that make mm -hmm. sense? A absolutely. And th this is what yeah. I, I keep seeing pop up is people who are successful and being able to really balance this, um, that mm -hmm. are experienced in these ways. There is this, this purpose, this, this bigger vision that's past money. And I think everybody right. who's listening and, and obviously you, you too, that it, we're, we're past that. Now, right. how, because I have a lot of people, a lot of young kids, yeah. just, just listen, I'm making money. I love it, but I'm working a nine to five job. And I feel like I have this bigger purpose. How do I help? And I say, I don't know. I'm trying to figure this out myself. Cause you know, I, I would say like my purpose <laughs> is I do feel like I'm here in a way to relieve people of their suffering, make them more aware. I'm a vessel of hope right. and all, all that good, you know, jazzy stuff. Right. How do you, did you end up merging these two together? Cause it seems like a lot of right. people have this fear of the cultural norms, which I, that's mm -hmm. why I'm so interested in shamanism. Cause I feel like the shaman in a way is really like a person who looked at the culture and kind of laughs at it, makes a little joke of it. And I do feel like I'm a shaman in some way. Um, yeah. How did the, how did those eight years with the hope? And just so people know, and you could correct me wrong. Yeah. The, mm -hmm. the, the Hopi was a native American people. Is that correct? Correct. And, um, yes. Yes. I did a yes. little bit of research. I believe they're like yeah. in Arizona, they started and, and correct. they're, yeah. um, I love the, 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 the saying that I saw is people who live in the correct way. And that just kind of hit me. And I've listened to a lot of Alan Watts and a lot of Terrence McKenna on the way right. of the shaman. I think it, it, it is a little confusing for me because they say one thing and then the healing side isn't too much spoken about. But how do you view what a shaman is and how did that process for eight years look? Because that's, that's a big dent in your life. Yeah. I mean, how did that look for me? <laughs> Woo! So I went to see her um, the first time without having an expectation of, you know, do being on this path. 
Um, I just went to her for personal healing. So I was in a state of crisis. I was listening to one of your pro podcasts earlier. And I think you mentioned that like after your divorce, you, it was like the state of crisis slash expansion. Yes. <laughs> so it was a similar thing for me, right? It was a, I was having an experience. It was a crisis moment. And I think in those moments, we protect ourselves, but also we have the potential of opening. So we can kind of crack the, the defenses and the coping strategies that got us to that point of crisis in the, in the first place. So anyway, I went to see her in a moment of crisis and what that looked like was, I mean, I mean, a lot of it, she called me out on a lot of shit. <laughs> she was like, what are you so scared of? And I was like, I'm not scared of anything. I'm from the Bronx. I'm like, from New York, motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. And then she was like, oh, beloved one. <laughs> so it was a lot of, you know, her calling me out on my shit, but in a, like, in a loving way. Like, she wasn't being a dick. She was, like, giving me the, the love and, like, directness that I needed. And it was a lot of, you know, a lot of crumbling. A lot. Like, it was a year, excuse me, eight years of, dismantling myself of you know as I call it the sacred dismantling um that it was you know I had to I cracked through so 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 many layers um of intense work and you know that's 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 what it looked like for me <laughs> it was very uncomfortable most of the time um and even you know there were moments where i rejected this i i rejected this path i rejected this role and she would say this is who you are this is what you're meant to be doing and i was like i'm teaching fucking oh can i curse sorry yeah, <laughs> fuck 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 okay. curse it's my show <laughs> okay, I good. okay good <laughs> i'm like doing push-ups in the park what are you talking about this is my role and she was and she was just insistent on it and the more that i felt the more that I trusted her and the more that I trusted myself and the more that I trusted the universe, the more that I was like, oh, she's right. This is, this is what I'm here to do. Um, so that was like my process uh, of it. So in short, I crumbled, <laughs> I crumbled. Um, and now as I look at it, when I work with people, um, I look at it in five different categories in terms of healing. So we look at the physical body, um, which is actually probably some of the most tangible, right? We all know we should have a movement practice. We all know we should be eating healthy. We all know we should be drinking lots of water and sleeping and breathing and doing all those stuff, doing all that stuff. And so we look at the physical body. We look at the emotional and psychological selves. We look at the environment that we're in, right? So coming from New York, I mean, I, I grew up here. I um, like, this is my baseline of being, but I also recognize this is a highly dysfunctional environment for humans to, to grow up in and to live in. Like the state of stress that our bodies are under is, is not actually normal. Um, and so looking at the environment and how that stuff affects us, looking at our community, do we have a tribe, do we have connection, and then also looking at spiritual connection, or like I said, purpose. And so as we start mapping all of these points out, we can start understanding, all right, if you're feeling anxious, or you're feeling whatever it is, it's not I would say most of the time, it's not a biochemical imbalance in the body. It might be because you don't have a connection to spirit or maybe you don't feel connected to people. And so if we look at all of this from a larger, wider lens, we can then start making adjustments that will change the entire scope of life, not just you know, our physical body or whatever it is that people want to change. Does that all make sense? It, it makes perfect sense. And I would say just, okay. just hearing that, I am pretty super shape spirit connected people. <laughs> environment for me like i had such a good time during covid everything was right. shut down i was like wow i'm a spiritual and now all of a sudden we're back in it and i just see you know carl young calls it the uh the regression of of your old personality of like right oh the clubs are open this is open like you keep oh new tonight we're going out for balls it's like the, these things that like I was like, why am I, why do I even want to do this? And it's like, you're just so conditioned to do it. And I'm just kind of, I was hoping last year, I was like, let's just get a little, let's just get one more variant. Like, just, let's just give me those six months of this. <laughs> the more right. I'm exposed to this 
and even going back into the office now, and you know, I, I was just complaining to Stacy before. Um, you know, I'm very grateful for my job, making a lot of money. I work 30 hours a week. I can't complain, but there's just like I wish I wasn't so aware now. And you know, my cousin's an enlightened guy. He studies a lot of Zen Buddhism. He was like, "This is the hardest part. This is where people break because you're aware of what's going on, but like, you can't really control it yet." And I wondered, like, it, was that? Is the environment the biggest issue for you? And what do you see generally that people have the issue? Because I don't even think the environment, that's more of a cultural thing. Yeah. It didn't it didn't hit me right. until I started really looking deep into these things. Yeah. So, I mean, I would say, you know, so yesterday, you're from New York. Yesterday, I was walking from uh, Penn Station over to Park Avenue. And I was like, this is the asshole of New York City. It's horrendous. <laughs> I was in, like, so my, my building was, was at One Penn Plaza for, tw for, for 25 years. I was at okay. One Penn Plaza and I just moved okay. to 38th Street. Yeah. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I just had a, yeah, keep going. Yeah. So like I could feel my nervous system armoring up. I mean, which is a good thing. Like you don't want to be open to all of that energy. You don't want to. So it's a good thing that it armors up. But if we think of that over time, what does that do? Your body learns to stay protected. And when it stays protected, what that means is it's protecting us from all of the emotion. So yeah, it might be protecting us from possible danger, but that also means it's protecting us from feeling alive. It's protecting us from fully experiencing joy or happiness or excitement. So the environment ha plays an integral role in our overall state of well, physical health, emotional health, mental health, all of the things. So, and that's, you know, I, I'm, I'm not advocating that everybody up and leave New York. Well, I mean, technically I am, but I'm not gonna, <laughs> but, but that like, you know, adjustments can be made um, based off of where you find yourself presently. As an example, if you do live in New York or any city like New York, it's really important to get out of New York regularly so that your nervous system can shut down, not shut down, but like just can calm down. So it's not on this hyper alert. I mean, even like walking on the streets, you know, we have skyscrapers. Now we understand what they are, but nowhere in nature are there skyscrapers like that. So our nervous system is still looking at those saying, what the fuck is that? I'm going to protect myself. I don't know what that is. So again, it doesn't matter. And it doesn't matter what we're, what we know. It's how our nervous system reacts is the important part. So you're saying feeling. me taking a train into the city there and back an hour and a half every day and wanting to murder people. That's not good. What a, what a fucking <laughs> surprise. It's not, it's not the answer. Not yeah. I started mapping. Cause I, once we started going back to work, I was like, I was all, I was all messed up. Cause I'm in, I'm here alone. Yeah. It's peace. It's like, I got, I got my Zen Buddhism room. I got all my nice things and I start going to work and I'm just like, I can't handle it. And with the way New York city is now, who's homeless, who's smoking pot on the train. I got to try to be the tough right. guy to save the world and all this stuff. It is like a right. stress getting into work. And what I started doing to offset this was every year for a month. Now I go away. Last year was uh, Hawaii. This year it's going to be Switzerland. Right. Just, right. and I spent two weeks doing nothing. And, you know, I think right. that that isolation, oh my God, like just when I'm not being told who I am, like who, like I'm like finding out who, and people think this is crazy. Like you'll sit, you're sitting by Lake, Lake right. Zurich is with Switzerland for two weeks. I'm like, right. I can't wait. Like that is, and it's free. I mean, it's not free, but it's free to just sit with nature. Um, and I'm not saying people go, right. go to, go to, just go sitting in nature and just like not being told who I am and just getting to see like who I actually am as like who I was as I was conceived as a person is just like one of the, and, and just things, the expansion of consciousness, the creativity that mm -hmm. these, all these other things. And especially for a very masculine Italian kid from Brooklyn, whose mother just told him the whole life, like, don't be a, don't be any jerk off to anybody. Cause you're, I'm always looking for like, what's this right. person's angle? What's, and when I come back, my boss like tells me, like, go away another month if you'd like, cause you're like, you're like a, right. you are a shaman when you come back. Um, right. And right. I, that's a big, <laughs> that's something that, that I've seen just help me is like getting away for, not a weekend because the weekends are really you need you need an extended amount of time to really be able to like just sit by yourself yeah. in complete isolation. Yeah, and the other thing about that, which I I see I notice in myself and my clients is that you know you'll know you'll see where you're at when you can go away for two weeks and it makes you anxious because you don't have anything to do. I mean, for me that's great because I'm like, okay, so that's something we have to work on. You're not comfortable being by yourself, and why are you not comfortable being by yourself? So that's like, a, that's a, that's a fun layer. That's a fun, that's a fun exercise to do with people. <laughs>
<laughs> yeah, I would say I, I feel comfortable, but I do get nervous that two weeks ago, right, with the um, just doing be, do that doing energy, that masculine energy, that completing tasks. Like, how do you balance this in your everyday life now of like being a very spiritual person, but you have to play this game of money and, and you know, whether it be f- lit, like for me, it's followers on the podcast or this or that. Like, how do you balance these two? Um, Cause I've learned if I keep my spirituality, if I keep that stillness very close, um, it just makes everything a lot easier. And I was curious to, to know what your kind of method was. So, I mean, for me, I think, you know, coming from, coming from where I did come from, I definitely took on as a younger person into my adulthood, um, like this masculine energy of having to do, of having to do, of having to be a certain way and like make shit happen. And I think part of my crumbling has been to receive, to be, to just like be present with what is right now. And so my practice for myself and that I offer other people is to just do that. Like one of us, a simple exercise that people can do is um, just check in with your body. Like right now, what is happening inside of you? And that's it. That's like a simple exercise that people can do Mm. on the subway. They can do before work, after work, during work, anything. And that brings you here into the present moment, into stillness, into just like receiving what is there and not having to change it. Just like, oh, I feel anxious right now. And I feel the anxiety in my legs or I feel joy and I feel it in my heart, whatever it is, just being, the more I can be present, the better even the action part becomes. Because I mean, part of it is too, is like, I think there's a, there is a, we all do need to take action, but I think most people think they need to constantly be acting I kind of relate it to the metaphor I give is like if you're driving a car and you're pressing on the accelerator and the brake at the same time most people think if they want to go faster they have to press on the accelerator more and I'm like no you don't have to press on the accelerator more just take your foot off the brake and mm-hmm. if you take your foot off the brake you see you actually go faster and so that's that that's that being present stuff is like that's just like take this brake off for a moment and see what's there and allow that to do its job. Does that make sense? Uh, I mean, it wouldn't have made sense to me five years ago because as New Yorkers, it's just like, go. And I think this, the, the hustle right. culture, like work, like, listen, I could work in eight hours and get a lot of stuff done. Like, just don't, don't bother me about, right. you know, working, but you know, k- killing right. myself. Now let's move this to, we did a little spirituality. I want to talk about the mindset, yeah. more of this, this, um, the, the Joe Dispenza mindset work. This is what got me on. Everybody knows my yeah. story by now, but when I started yeah. this process of, of, because he starts similar to kind of what you were describing, body scanning and st- doing that for 10 to 15 yeah. minutes, getting us to theta. Yeah. Um, how did this work yeah. change your life? And like, how do you view this now? Because some people call it a super consciousness. Some people call it, you know, I, I, I just want to know what you think of this whole thing and how you describe yeah. it. Because being from New York, I'm interested because sometimes these things, people just get into that woo stuff. And I'm, I'm like, whoa, I just got to pull right. it back. And I think with the science that right. we see, it's, it's clear that this stuff works. And I'm just curious your view right. how and, and how you got to where you are. Yeah. So that's a big question. Okay. (laughs) So um, I think, I think, so the language that I like to speak is the language of the nervous system, right? So we kind of, I take it away from the spiritual stuff, although I am a hundred percent into the spiritual stuff, but I talked about the, the nervous system. And when we look at the nervous system, when we look at the nervous system in a stress response, which is, like I said, if we live in New York, by default, we are in stress. Then the different parts of the brain that are responsible for creativity, that are responsible for um, uh, feeling peace, like all of those brain centers get shut down because our body is detecting that we're under some sort of threat. Mm -hmm. So if we can think of this in, in an animalistic way, if an animal is being chased because there is a threat, they're not thinking about enjoying life. They're not thinking about being creative. They're thinking of surviving. And so in some ways, our nervous systems are always just thinking about surviving, which is why we're stuck in the, let's make money. I need this. I need that. Or we're, we're, I mean, we're doing that. And then we're using drugs or sex or going out and partying to soothe ourselves because we're under so much stress, but we want to take that break, but our nervous systems don't know how. So we're going to do this to temporarily soothe us 
And then that's good for like a minute or two or maybe a day. And then, <laughs> and then we're back in it, right? So this, is a, so this is how I kind of talk about it and look at it. It's that our, our, we are just so hyped up on the stress response. And the other thing is that, you know, the stress response, I think it takes, you know, the sympathetic nervous system takes a kind of a bad rap. Like we shouldn't be in stress, but actually what I'm saying is stress is a natural function of the body. It's, it's turning the sympathetic nervous system on is a natural function of the body. It's only when it's under threat that it becomes a problem. And when it's consistent that it becomes, not when it's under threat, let me, let me rephrase that. When it's chronic, that it becomes a problem. When it's under threat and it reacts, it's good. Now, if we change that, so that same sympathetic nervous system on button, but we create it in a safe environment, then that's the energy of like motivation and uh, strategic planning and all that stuff. So this meditation and all that stuff, we're not shutting off the sympathetic nervous system. We're just getting it into a state of safety so that all the different brain centers that were turned off when it was under threat start activating. And now we can be creative. Now we can feel excitement. Now we can feel joy. Does that make sense? Yeah, this is, I, I did this. So, yeah. so I, okay, I was yeah. so, I was so hyped up. I was so motivated during COVID because I didn't have the stress of going into the city. And I was, um, I, I was doing a lot of stand-up comedy and I right. never had that, that creativity of me. And all of a sudden just started mm -hmm. popping up and sitting with your thoughts and like, you know, right. a lot of breath work, pranayama, I'm a big fan right. of, and just like letting my body do the work. It, it opened, mm -hmm. it opened all this stuff up. And now it's almost like, I keep trying to like light the, the, the ignition, but I just can't yeah. get it going. And even like yeah. when I would, I remember the first couple months I was listening to Joe and you're doing just the, the simple 25, 30 minute stuff. Yeah. I was like vibrating with an energy. Yeah. And I would go into the, you know, I have a, 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 a sensory deprivation tank. I hop in a couple right. times a month and now with, and then add a pandemic, add world war three, I had stress at work, like add everything. Yeah. It's like, you lose it. Yeah. And now I see myself like chasing it i'm like how do i do this how do i do this and i, I didn't realize like it's the it is the environment unfortunately but um right. you know the, the, yeah. that's where i'm at so i agree with everything you're saying yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so so that's like kind of a general out, outlook of of that and how that stuff works and then i think we sh i shared with you a little bit earlier about you know how i like to work with people i work with people primarily um i mean based off of what they need but one of the in initial diagnostic diagnostics that I use with people is what I call body mapping. Have you ever heard of this term? Yes, but I'm not too familiar. Okay. No. So the idea of body mapping or character armor or character structure is this idea that when um, we have chronic and or intense enough experiences during developmental times in our lives, specifically in utero to about seven, eight years old, that when these things, when these experiences go unresolved, they wire into the nervous system. They wire into the tissue of the body, the posture of the body and affect the musculature of the body. And so by looking at a person's posture, by looking at a person's body language, I can understand what their primary emotional and psychological obstacles are. So for me, it's, it's, it's helpful because it allows us to do work that bypasses the defenses, bypasses the coping strategies, and really gets to the root and core of what is what the problem is, basically, right? So when we get to the root of the belief system, the root of the emotional and psychological patterns in life, then we can start offering what it actually wants, we can start kind of healing that part. And then in the long term, what that does is it changes the way we think, feel and act in life. Does that all make sense? Ab absolutely. And I think this, this comes into play with the, the unconscious work, right? Carl Jung's work and a lot of subconscious, even Joe's. Um, and I think we need right. some, even like you mentioned it with, with, uh, with, with your kind of the person who taught you for eight years, like you yeah. need somebody to see what you don't see that unconscious repressed stuff. And even like, for me, I've had a couple people who have said this stuff to me, like quick story, Stacey, like between this is funny. This happened when I was six and you're saying like, it's yeah. important. Um, my father was <laughs> in the mafia. He went to the witness protection program, ran right. away, but all this wacky stuff. And I still, yeah. when I started meditating and started right. doing this stuff, 
I always had this weird flash. And I just thought it was like, a, I made it up in my head. I, I remembered yeah. my father being pulled for me from the cops and I never knew it and whatever. And I saw my grandfather for the first time in two years. So my father put my grandfather in jail. He ratted on him in the first Rico case. So my grandfather gets yeah. out of jail, tells me this whole story. I'm like, holy shit. Right. And he told me, he was like, do you remember the day that your father was taken from you? And that, I was like, holy shit, this is real. Right. So I right. got these, I had these memories because I, it's no surprise. I don't remember much from my childhood, right? We can, you know, I can right. just assume that this is that issue. But like, I, I was like, right. wow, there's, it goes that deep. Like there's right. a there's memory from 26, 27 years ago. Um, right. This stuff is is just so powerful. And I think you need somebody like yourself yeah. to kind of gudge. Because when that hit me out, yeah. you can go off the, I could see how people can go off the hinges with this stuff and just be like, wow, like you're either scared or just kind of keep pushing it down. Right. Um, how does that process look like when, when you kind of uncover something for somebody that's, yeah. that's powerful? So, um, so anyway, I, I want to just add for you, oh, yeah, sure. uh, I, I'm just, just based off of what you shared with me and especially six years old. So you're what I would, I would assume, and I'm not, I don't see your whole body. I just see your shoulders right now. So I, I'm not a hundred percent sure, but can I give you my, my oh, assessment? I didn't want to <laughs> ask. So I didn't want to ask. Cause it always like, it always comes back to me. I would love it. I would love it. It's free okay. therapy for me. So shoot. Okay. And you could shit on me. You could tell me something and, uh, you know, very open over here. So your is yours your character armor or, or um, uh, character structure is what's called the rigid achiever. So wounded at the heart by lack of approval, you seek uh, you seek acceptance uh, through achievement and accept love. You, I mean, basically, in order to be worthy of love, you try to achieve things. Um, there's a primary imbalance in giving and receiving love. You're good at giving. You're not good at receiving. Uh, you have this mentality of, I love humanity. I'm not sure if I love humans themselves, like individual people. <laughs> and you have a issue with trusting people. <laughs> How does this sound to you? Uh, 137% accurate. <laughs> um, <laughs> yes. Just had a discussion with a little nice lady. Let's say I'm dating. And I was just told the same thing. It's like, this is all, all right, how do I fix this now? You want to tell me my, my the problem? So, okay, we'll use me as an okay. example. We, we pick this stuff. Right. Um, you, you better give me a freaking answer how to solve this now. Because now I'm on. Now I'm on. So, okay, so now you sign up for a session. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so, so this, so, okay. So, th but this is actually not, it's not as easy as this is what you do X, mm -hmm. Y, and Z. It mm -hmm. would be a process of, um, uncovering, I mean, you did just share what that is. So it would be a process of getting connected with that. I mean, that experience just came up for you. So I would say like, it would be a process of getting to that experience of that six-year-old boy. What was that six-year-old boy feeling? I imagine he must've been feeling lots of fear. I imagine, I mean, maybe he felt angry. I don't know. Maybe he felt shame. He, I, I imagine there was confusion. So it would be basically a process of taking you back, whether it's through speaking, whether it's through movement practices, it might be through, you know, meditation there, you know, it might be through breathing. It could be through a whole different, mm -hmm. uh, many different ways, but basically it would be taking you back to that point and allowing those feelings in their intensity to come back up because whatever is unresolved doesn't just go away. It gets stored in your body, right? So in order to release that, we need to get back into the root of what it was. So whether, like I said, I don't know what that is. Was it fear? Was it shame? Was it grief? Was it, so it's a, it's, and it's a process. It's not, I wouldn't say, all right, let's go jump into this fear because as a six-year-old and seeing that, I am at that, I imagine that to be overwhelming to the body, right? That's mm -hmm. to a six-year-old body, right? So it would be a process of kind of resourcing you, right? So it sounds like you do a lot of resourcing, you breathing and meditation mm -hmm. and all of that stuff, right? So resourcing and then building nervous system resilience. So knowing that you could go into those very deep, painful places and knowing that you can come back out because you have the resources. And so it's mm -hmm. a gentle, just like exercise, right? You wouldn't, if you've never done 10 push-ups, you, you might start with one or two, and then the next time three, and the next time four. So that's building nervous system resilience. So it's the same thing with 
dealing with these traumatic events. It's we don't want to jump right into it. We want to build, 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 build until we have the capacity to deal with whatever pain that was, allow it to go through the system and then move out of the system, right? So we only, we, the reason it creates an issue is because it's not because it was present and we felt it, it becomes a problem only when it's repressed and we're not dealing with it. Exactly. Uh, yeah. Absolutely. I think the natural thing for us, and even with, you know, taking more general f- fear or anything, it's like yeah. move away from it. And Buddhism and, and all the ancient religions will tell you it's the mm-hmm. other way. You really have to like embrace it. And um, right. I would say I, I was, it was, it was difficult because I'm still working through it with the shadow work yeah. and, you know, journaling. Right. It, it's For me, the issue is kind of exactly what you were saying. Like, the actual act of feeling something, which was like, you know, I was telling this girl this last night. She's like, wait, are you saying you have trouble feeling? And I was like, yeah, this is the truth. Like, you know, it, it's, yeah. it's yeah. More just think, think, think processes are easy, hitting goals is easy. But that feeling side, right. that, that yin, that feminine energy is like, yeah. I want it. I really do. Like, I love it. I just, I, I, sometimes you feel it, but then that is, um, that is very interesting. That is very, and I like how you're saying yeah. there's different you're not saying, well, you have to do a soma breath work. You have to like, it's all different flavors. I think that's, that's the fun part of spirituality. It's like, right. you have to do a right. similar to the gym, like what will you'll be consistent with, but what, what works for you and what opens up these different pieces. Cause when I say this, I'll try to go this yeah. deep with some of these Italian guys. And they go, I got no issues for my childhood. Yeah. It's like, yeah, just cause you can't, right. you know, you're not aware of it. It's because then you wouldn't be able to live your life. You dummy. Right. Like you can't, you know, I can't right. this. If I would have had, if I would right. be aware of this feeling, I would probably be the best somewhere, somewhere. So I am, right. it is funny and right. I will have a, there will be a movie about me and yeah. I will have Ryan Gosling playing me and it'll be a, it's going to be a beautiful. <laughs> so, um, and no, I think, you know, yeah. I can, can I just add to, yeah, yeah I think, you know, one of the things with this, one of the things with this, right, is, you know, knowing what your problems are or what your experiences are, or your trauma is, is one level of healing, but the healing actually happens when the body feels, when the body feels it, right? So I know I came from a fucked up childhood, but for a long time, I also, like you, wasn't dealing with it. I was like, yeah, okay, you know, that was what it was. That's how it, that's how it was. Move on. Except my body was numb. I couldn't feel. And so part of that is not just knowing here, but knowing in your body. That's where the real healing happens is knowing in your body or embodied understanding. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, and that's actually, you know, that's, It's not easy, but when we understand that we have to understand in our bodies, not just our minds, then that gives us outlets for healing that you can teach the body how to create boundaries. You can teach the body how to like actually feel things. Like if you're numb, if you do this, eventually your skin is going to change how it's sensing things. And when your mm-hmm. skin changes how it's sensing things, what that tells me is that the input going into the sensory uh, nervous system and therefore the input going into the central nervous system is changing. So little things, this seems like a ridiculous thing, right? I'm, I feel emotionally numb. How is this going to help? But it does help because it's, it's accessing the central nervous system through the sensory system. Does that make sense? Absolutely. I'm going to be smacking yes. myself now in the morning till I add that to my, to my I mean, routine. <laughs> I mean, that's a whole nother category of being, which I won't go into right now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, th- this was wonderful, Stacey. Um, is there anything else that's coming up or anything you want to talk about before we, we kind of close out? Uh, no, I think we, I think we covered it all. This has been really, really good. I mean, this, this was yeah. eye opening. If you would like to join me again, please. We'll pick another topic oh. or something else. I feel like we can just Absolutely. go anywhere, but um, everybody, you can find Stacy's information in the notes below. Um, you find her email, all that stuff. Any questions, just let me know. YouTube, uh, thanks for joining us on the new, uh, you're, you're lucky, Stacy. We started this March 1st, so you'll be on the YouTube channel. We're going to have a million likes soon. This is Yay. great stuff. So uh, everybody, just do me a favor, hit the like, subscribe button. Um, people listening, tell one of your friends about it. Leave a review if you like more. Just talk about how lovely Stacy is and how hilarious I am. And that's really it. But um, <laughs> that's it, everybody. Thank you so much. As always, stay safe, stay positive, stay blessed. We'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.